Good evening, Elizabeth Diamond here for the Diamonds Network, uh, May 16th, 2016. Uh, Diamonds Forever 3113 show tonight, Elizabeth, your host. So tonight, um, tonight, we, I'll give you the lineup for tonight. We're going to have Candy Jar News and Cynthia will be on giving the astrology energies and I'm just bringing this on. This will be our, I think, third time talking about love, sex, and, no, not rock and roll, love, sex, and music. Rock and roll is only a little teeny part of that. So we'll continue with that uh, subject. I know Cynthia has some other things she wanted to talk regarding this sacred union and all that. So we'll have our, we'll we'll wrap up our call tonight with that. And next Monday, we'll have a guest with Cynthia. I'm really excited about this because it'll be a really colorful juicy energies description mm-hmm. of astrology coming in. Ethan, Ethan Chimenti, he does astrology like Cynthia, but a little different twist on that. So I was hoping to uh, get both Cynthia and Ethan to give their outlook on the energies coming in and maybe for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. So that'll be a flavorful mm-hmm. call, you guys. And uh, just for Chris's schedule, an update on Chris's schedule. And, you know, he... He's a little behind on reading since he took that month off, and he can only do one a one a day. So this Monday, he will not be here, which is today, nor this Wednesday. But uh, next Wednesday, he'll be on the Candy Shop Show, which is, I think, the 24th or 25th of May. And then the 30th of May on a Monday, he'll be here. So that's kind of the lineup. And so I just want to give a shout out and thank you to all those that posted that network information, all of you guys separately, and Google, Facebook, iqdcalls.com. And I want to thank you, shout out to those faithful uh, few that have been giving energy back in kind on the donate button there on the Diamonds blog. And if you feel like it, just give back energy in kind if you guys are enjoying these and growing from it. Uh, the donate button's on the right-hand side of the blog, which is diamonds with an S forever, 31.blogspot.com. Lots of good stuff, missions of diamonds, learning who you really are, and galactoizing. So tonight, I w- uh, as you know, me and Candy, we do every other Thursday show, and then the other Thursday, Cynthia Mayer and Marianne did a long astrology energy show. Uh, but me and Ken, you're going to be taking a break, and we do have a new um, a new show to fill that every other Thursday slot. I'm announcing it tonight, and and she'll be on this Thursday. So be sure to join on a bringer in. You guys know her as Misty, and um, I just want to let you know I still have the chapters in Sunshine Before the Dawn to read. Sixteen, like four or five chapters. I plan on doing those all in one show or a couple shows i'll pre-record and put them up on the youtube i'll let you know i'm moving this week so not this week next week i'll finish sunshine before the dawn because it's really good and i did put a new blog up all the chapters are up there it, they're right before right the blog is right under the benjamin fulford report for today oh. so misty lynn her new show is uh and then she can say more uh, we Are the Solution by Misty Lindstar, and it's going to be in the realm of health and organic health and healing, wholeness, W-H-O-L-E. So come on, Misty, tell us a little bit about what's going to go on Thursday. Oh, well, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, can You're you really me? far away. Uh-oh. Can you hear me now? Unless I am. What was that? There, that's better. Okay, that's better? Okay, well, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, you know, I'm going to say this. It will, is about, it, hopefully it will be about exactly what you said, uh, natural healing, 
and um, health. And what I'm going to do in preparation for that show is I'm going to do a fast. And I've already began it, 5 o'clock tonight. And I'm going to do that for myself. And then I'm going to do that. I'm going to share my experience on Thursday on that show. And I will be inviting a friend of mine who is a holistic, um, let's see, actually, okay, he's a tra- he's a neurologist, and he's also a um, holistic doctor, I believe. I'll let him explain who he is when he comes on on, on that show on, on Thursday. And we can talk about the, we're going to talk about a lot of things likely on that day, but I welcome anybody to come in who wants to hear about natural ways to heal ourselves and who also would want to hear about some stories that I may have about some healing I've experienced myself through natural means. And also, I would just like to uh, share my experience during my fasting about what I experienced over this fasting time over the next couple of days. So how's that sound? That's beautiful, Misty. Be sure to join We Are the Solution with Misty Lindstar every other Thursday, which starts this Thursday at 7.30 p.m. on the Diamonds Network. And it's exciting to see how, yeah, you know, when the shows come on, somebody needs to start six to meet up. It's exciting to see the new shows come on and just be there and see how they grow and transpire and maybe go on a different path or, you know, it's a it's a surprise. I like surprises. Yay! I like to go with the flow. (laughs) Yeah, that's a cool idea. I'm excited about your little plan, Misty. That's great. Fasting, and that's great. And and so Misty's going to bring a a card for us tonight really quick from – for the whole audience of to go with the energies that Cynthia Marianne Mira will talk about and Candy and I'm sure everybody in all of our conversation tonight. But remember later we're gonna be talking about sex, love and music, our about third talk on there. We wanna make sure we get all that important uh union, sacred union in ourselves first in so you guys can have the knowledge and understanding and then the action of it, wisdom and Even when you come to the knowledge and understanding of something, it just comes naturally. You don't have to work work hard for it. Just trust. Trust and have faith. Trust and have faith. All right. Come on, Missy. All right. Well, Elizabeth, would you mind saying the prayer of law of one, please, before we do the part? Oh, sure. We want to call in our galactic brothers and sisters that have joined with the Diamonds Network. His proposal. So, so, oh, Bev, if the star six, honey. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, and we call in the divine flame of living love, and we call in all our brothers and sisters and all our higher selves and all our spiritual, mental, That's physical, right. emotional selves. Okay, let me just set the room. And we just thank you all for coming. Let me set the room. Well, you guys are all coming. Okay, there we go. And we just thank you all for coming. And Cynthia, why don't you finish the why don't you say the prayer? And maybe Marianne, Cynthia, Mary can say it all together. That'll be in unison, like music. How's that? Come on, you guys. I want to challenge you. Oh, okay. All right, y'all. For the new people, this is the original law of creation. It is um where all other laws come from. And when you speak the law of one, you override all other laws, and that is civil laws and social laws. And this is in all dimensions and all planets. And as we've seen with our galactivizing, with Chris and all um, other beings from other realms and dimensions and places, immediately recognize this law. And it, and I'm just going to say the first uh, sentence and everybody can say it together and then I'll say the second and so forth. And Marianne and Mary, Mary if you're on, um, we can just all three say the first sentence together. Here we go. We, we are, all are all one. All one. We are all one. All one. When one is, when harmed, one is harmed, all are harmed. All are harmed. When one is harmed, all are harmed. Therefore, 
when one is help, there. Oh yeah, when one is help. Thank you. When what is help, all are help. All are help. When one is help, one is helped. All are helped. Therefore, therefore, in the name of who I am. Therefore, in the name of who I am. And, and I, I am, am one, one with all there is. All there is. And I am one, I am with, one all with all there is. There is. I ask and that I only, ask the, the, only highest the highest good. I ask that only, only the, the highest, good. highest good. Of all concerns of all happen. Concerns happen. Of all concerns, of all concerns happen. happen. And, and I give I thanks give that this thanks is done. That this is done. And I give thanks. I give thanks. Thank so be it, and so it is. 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 And I want to thank all our brothers and sisters in other dimensions and realms and other planets for joining with us in that. And I am asking you to teach everyone and to do it often, because we need dramatic love miracles on this planet. The suffering has got to stop. We have got to start producing supreme divine happiness. And oh, that that prayer was beautiful, Cynthia. All everybody, it was like a, you know, like a row, row your row your boat. What you going yeah. around? That was beautiful. Yeah. I loved oh. it. Yeah, me too. So back to you, hon. Oh, stay tuned, and we'll bring you yeah. Misty. She's going to do our card, and then you could go on into your astrology stuff. Yeah. That'd be great. Are we ready? Ready. We're ready. Okay. So I did want to say something. Something came to me the other day uh, that, you know, last year and the year before and just any time, I I spent a lot of time trying to do what's called minimizing my ego. And I think we all have done it. Um, And it just, you get to a point where I, you realize that how much you need your ego <laughs> to do some things in life. And I kind of have experienced something where I realized, you know what, ego? I would like you to work with me here. I have a wonderful job for, for you to do that I know that you can do. <laughs> and it's been, it's just been kind of an interesting process. And um, so I just kind of wanted to share that, that I don't know where people are on, on what they think about the ego, but it is definitely a necessary function. Um, and there was something I was akinning it to, which was kind of like, um, okay, the negative, okay, negative self-talk that uh, we, we tell ourselves um, after experiencing the hard lives that we have experienced. Um, we will want to to change that talk, that self talk, into positive things, and um, it's just it's just kind of akin to that. It's like you know, this can be very useful. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to share that, and then I'm going to tell you that uh, the card that came up is the father on on this one, and I think it's appropriate. The traditional card is the emperor, and the key words are leadership and self-control. And the description is, the father is the creating lord of the forest, the companion creator of the mother. His powerful body symbolizes his perfect balance in both nature and spirit. His green belt establishes his eternal reign with the mother over all forms of reproduction, whether human, animal, or nature. The antlers, the symbol of sexual energy, are worn as a crown, a sign that the father is in complete control of himself and all his emotions and energies. In his left hand, he holds a globe, the material world, which is his prime domain, while his right hand calls down and skillfully catches bolts of lightning, the divine spark or cosmic fire necessary for the creation of all life, animate or inanimate, all about him 
nature flourishes green and abundant, the result of his loving power. The twisting roots of the tree symbolize the power of the tree life, which extends across multidimensional worlds into the physical. The animals seen about him represent wisdom, eagle, courage, boar, eternal life and rebirth, snake, sexual vitality, ram, strength, cougar. There's a lot of animals in this card. <laughs> um, endless curiosity about life, raccoon, and cunning, wolf. As the energies of both the father and the mother are necessary in order to create and recreate in the world, so must the seeker learn to combine and control the masculine and feminine energies within. In order to progress upward on a spiritual path, the seeker needs to have complete self-control over the sexual drive and emotions. So the prophecy for this card is under the influence of the father, the seeker is given the opportunity to learn and benefit from self-control. Without accomplishing this, he or she cannot hope to move forward or move into the roles of leadership and greater responsibility that will come. An opportunity to expand knowledge is offered but will be unsuccessful without self-discipline. So did that card speak to anybody besides me? Because it could have been just for me. (laughs) That was great. (laughs) That's what I was going to talk about. And, yeah. Uh, uh, Definitely. It could have been just for me because that's why I'm, um, for me, it's And you just talked about the ego, and it mentioned about the ego. At the very last line, it said it wouldn't last unless, uh, read that last line. Um, well, let's see. Without accomplishing this, I was talking about self-control, which is, you know... Um, Just read the last two sentences of there. Okay. Two sentences. Under under the influence of the Father, the seeker is given the opportunity to learn and benefit from self-control. Without accomplishing this, he or she cannot cope to move into the roles of leadership. Yeah, and, and when you talked is. about ego right before this, that has something to do oh. with, you know, discipline. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, ego, yeah. but, you know, helping to he- heal the ego yourself, loving yourself. Yeah, yeah that's the base of that's beautiful. I have something to add. If I don't sure I, that. I, I, you know, I was taught 40 years ago that the ego is the part of a person that actually gets you out of bed in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> to step up or talk on the telephone, you know, it's even though you're nervous about it and worried what people will think, the ego is the part of us that worries what people think. The ego is the captain of our ship. I mean, I'm, I'm mm. backwards. I'm sorry. What mm-hmm. I'm trying to say is, The captain of the ship is the one that makes the decisions. That's like the father in your cards, I believe. And the ego, Mm -hmm. like the first mate or the guy who steers the ship. But but the the object is... And there's a trim tab. Yeah, yeah. The first mate takes orders from the captain. He doesn't make the orders up. He takes the orders from the captain, and then he passes... He or she, you know, the ego passes that information on to the rest of the collective that makes up our human ship. And, uh, and you know, just like on any any boat, any ship, um, if the ego t- starts playing captain and starts changing the captain's orders or trying to convince everybody else on board that he's the captain and not the first mate, uh, what you get you get mutiny on the bounty. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Kat, you just described I know another that way story. of. I just know uh, that story somewhere. <laughs> another way of describing what you just said is, is uh, part of sacred union, too. And we're going to talk about that later tonight. Oh, thank you. We're excited. But we're going to get through our energies and what 
Cynthia and them want to bring on first. Thank you, Pat. That was great. Mm-hmm. Huh, Missy? Well, Thank oh, you, wait, Pat. Candy. Uh, we have candy first. We have candy jar for news. Sorry about yes. that. Yes. <laughs> Come on in, Candy. Okay, everybody. I'm taking the lid off the candy jar treats and, and uh, uh, you know, thinking about the candy uh, shop show on Wednesday starting an hour later. And, 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 and this is great about, you know, Sunny having her Tuesday shows and, and, and she's going to be helping me with the show on Wednesday also. And then Misty, we're going to be, I'm going to be talking about Benjamin Fulford and Ben Davidson here in a minute. But, uh, uh, Sissy, Misty has uh, reminded me about um, all the fasting that I have done in my life, and, and I uh, I just recommend fasting to, to to everyone, and 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 more of us should do uh, more fasting this week. I think in unison with with Misty. Now uh, everybody seems to have a different take on fasting, but one thing mm-hmm. I, uh, that that everyone can do that that is so powerful, folks, is to dedicate your fast to some great cause. And, mm. and, and so, uh, yeah, my, my family, we did an experiment. We, we, um, we uh, prayed each night for uh, a particular person or situation, and, and we dedicated our fast for that, that day, you know, to that person. And uh, we... Uh, we would brainstorm, you know, as a family, well, are we going to fast off Coca-Cola the next day? Are we going to, uh, you know, fast, you know, fast off of, of uh, sugar? And, and then we would dedicate that fast to, to who we were praying for. And, and it was just, um, you know, the folks that we didn't pray for uh, didn't have the blessings until we did dedicate the fast. And, of course, I fast off of, of uh, flesh meat from cows and pigs and, 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 and other animals every day. And, and I try to dedicate my fast uh, off of those things, um, too. And so that's, uh, that's, that's just really powerful. And, 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 you know, and some people, of course, fast off everything except water. And, and that's very, very strong. And, but it's important to, to that. Well, uh, I'm going to uh, start off uh, with Benjamin Fulford next. Um, and, and if someone wants to come in, make a comment or question, you're welcome to. Uh, star six, you know. But uh, Benjamin Fulford is talking more about the, the Chinese and um, uh, their offer of to, to provide gold to back our dollar, and there's an awful lot of things and maneuvers going on. Apparently, um, a little surprised that there are some who are not wanting to accept the gold, not thinking it important to have a gold-backed dollar, and surprisingly, Don, Donald Trump is one of these, and and I I'm surprised to to learn from. Benjamin, that he that that Donald Trump would not understand something like the importance of having a currency that is that uh, has value on it, like like with gold. Well, um, let's just see what uh, Benjamin is saying. The whole report is on Liz's um, blog, and um, so here we go. Satan worshipping Assyrians in the U.S. and Europe are also in deep trouble now that their TTIP trade agreement with Europe is doomed. The TTIP was supposed to protect them from prosecution and from having to pay cheated investors, so without it the Hazarian banks are toast, the Pentagon sources say. The shadow banking world of hedge funds is also suffering huge losses because they are no longer getting inside information from the Federal Reserve Board. The dysfunctional state of the stock and foreign exchange markets has also caused investors with real money to avoid these markets. Investors are stewards of other people's money and they don't want to allocate capital to a pyramid scheme, is how Brian Capital's Russ Chergo described the newfound sense of morality, fear of retribution, in the financial markets. 
The pyramid scheme he is referring to is central banks using fiat money to prop up stock and bond markets. In other words, more and more people in the financial markets are realizing they very well indeed may be imprisoned on racketeering charges if they continue with business as usual. To conclude this week's report, please find attached below raw intelligence from the Russians that illustrates just how evil the Hazarian Mafia is and why we need to destroy the scourge once and for all. Okay, so... That's part of the shenanigans going on. And yeah, I want to just let you know, Candy, that sounded excellent, whatever you did. So there's the measure for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good deal. And the the Saudis apparently have gone to uh, China to ask for help. And, you know, they're, they got uh, uh, nope as the answer. Uh, they Benjamin is rightly characterizing the Saudis as as a bunch of camel thieves <laughs> who got uh, uh, lucked out in in one fashion to this whole mess with the um, the oil and and taking it from the rest of us. So um, next um, on the list uh, of uh, information treats is from uh, Suspicious Observer's channel on YouTube. Uh, ben Davidson is talking about, uh, with so many others, are talking about the earthquake situation and the alignment, and I'm sure Cynthia is going to talk some more, but uh, he's saying that the alignments um, um, are, the, the solar flares and things are looking like there'll be an uptick and and there's more talk about you know that earthquakes happen on the new moons and the full moons and this Saturday will be a full moon and so we're we're coming in to uh, a bit of an uh, uh, earthquake uptick um, that Benjamin is saying and so I'm uh, I'm thinking we might very well you know have uh, some six and sevens uh, maybe even an eight this weekend with the full moon. But here here it goes. Near six pointer in the West Pacific as well. Top news starts here. Folks, this is a topographical map of Mercury. NASA, USGS, and various universities collaborated to put it together. One imagines the hunt for electrical formations should probably begin. Either way, it's an amazing animation. Summer forecast for Europe is out. More storms in the center of the continent with warmer conditions favoring Greece and the areas to the east. We've got twin earth spots in the Indian Ocean. Northern storm is a cyclone candidate. Those colder temperatures we warned about last week arrived and all-time record cold marks fell or were matched across a large portion of the Midwest. That cell is moving across New England now while the rains coming from the western system are getting to flood soaked parts of the south today and overnight. Folks, we are featuring the human health and electromagnetism section today at suspiciousobservers.org. How does space weather affect you? Click premium in the menu bar and scroll down to humans and EM. Membership is all of four dollars and you get hundreds of hours of material. Pressure and radar forecasts continue across the pond down under and in the South Atlantic, followed by shots of our star to close at 3.45 a.m. in the New Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Okay. So that was uh, Benjamin from about this morning's uh, uh, report. And here is someone new that I just uh, learned about. And his... uh, Earthquake forecast is for May 16th through the 25th, and he is very concerned about uh, tomorrow and about uh, talking about the alignments with uh, Venus and Mercury and and um, Mars, and then uh, also uh, the Sun and Mercury and Saturn, and then on the 22nd the Sun, the Earth, Mars, and then on the 25th, Venus, Earth, and Mars. And that, um, uh, so so he is wondering, you know, if we would actually have 
uh, an earthquake at the at at those particular times. It's sometimes hard for me to understand the you know universal times and things. But like on the 25th, I think that would be Sunday. It's at 226. Here we go. The coordinates here we see some Earth Mars on the 22nd, and this will coincide with full moon, if I'm not mistaken. Let's have a look at the moon alignments here as well. They're also very important. There. And we have several moon alignments here from the 18th to the 22nd here. Yeah. See moon Earth on the 21st. Can anybody hear it? It's something on silent. Hello, anybody there? I'm here, but uh, the voice did yeah. go silent. I think Candy might I, have dropped off. I don't know. I think she dropped. She dropped, dropped. Yeah. We'll give her a few minutes. Hopefully she yeah. probably will realize it after the recording goes off. Yes. Mhm. Yep. Come on, Candy. We're She'll here. probably have to dial back in. Yeah, she will. Mhm. <laughs> I watched the movie Pan. Pan is like a Peter Pan movie. It yeah. likes the theme of Peter Pan out on the movie theaters. It was on TV this weekend. A very colorful movie and fun. You know, think happy thoughts. <laughs> yeah. And the, the fairies, and they went into this crystal mine. All the crystals were uh, just everything was made out of crystal. It's pretty interesting because you know, Pluto is at the place of crystals and stones. Nice. Yep. I watched Deadpool, and it was really funny. And uh, I think it was not rated, so, but it was it was a good comedy relief. <laughs> what is it called? Deadpool. It's with Ryan Deadpool. Reynolds. It's it's pretty Ryan Reynoldsy, <laughs> or uh, no, oh. no, it's kind of over the top a little on some things. So adult minds only, but it's it was funny. <laughs> Come on, Candy. <laughs> Um, well, can you? Hi, um, this is Sunny. I just messaged her on Facebook. She said she had a phone call and had to, she said, oh. and goofed up. So <laughs> okay. she knows what's happening, yeah. Oh, she's coming right back or she wants us to go forward? She said I had an important phone call and I goofed up. So I don't know what she's going to do, but she, okay, I had a well, message to go yeah. up for her, so. Yeah. I was wondering if I could ask Cynthia a question real quick, if that's okay. Sure. On um yeah, mm-hmm. go ahead. Sure. Cynthia, did you think did you understand what I was saying, trying to say about the ego? And I was kinda of wondering what you thought of it. About then, I liked what you had to say. It was very thought provoking. Um I would have to think about what I would say in addition to it. And and what Pat said, it all goes together. Yeah, yeah, it, I thought it, it yeah. was very it, good. I think it, it's it a necessary does, folks, function. This is, this is Candy. I'm back. I'm it's sorry I just up. Uh, but I was about to complete my report. If you don't mind, I'd like to Please. add that. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm a. I'm. I'm planning a trip in July, uh, uh, going east on Highway 70, and I kind of wanted to announce that if if any of those listening would like. Uh, Candy uh, to stop over for a little visit uh, on on uh, uh, I'm going to be traveling July 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th, and so I'm going you know from uh, St. Louis to uh, Annapolis, Maryland, and so if anybody particularly in Indiana and Ohio uh, would like a visit, 
uh, my phone, my email is key to truth at yahoo.com. And I'd love to hear from you. And uh, so I've been enjoying the research at, uh, twice a week for these candy jar treats, and I just appreciate you all. So thank you That's very nice, much. That's nice, Candy. <laughs> That's yeah. creative. That's nice, a traveling visitor. I'm going to be that. We all are going to be that. And it's key to truth at yahoo.com, right? Absolutely. All right. Well, thank and you. And I'm excited me, about our topic for tonight. Yes. Thank you, Liz. Highway everybody. 70. Going, she's a traveling down Highway 70. And there's a new song out named Candy. I'm going to find it one of these days and play it one of these days, but not tonight. <laughs> but it's great. It's like okay. a mystic. A mystic. You like it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good. Thank you, Candy. Uh-huh. All right. Come on in, Cynthia, and let's do what you got Candy. for tonight and we'll have our we'll have our talk about the ego and sacred union and sex and music after that. Did I hear something? Sure. Candy. Yeah, I I was going to ask a quick question from Candy. Can you oh, hear me? Oh, Candy. Candy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Um, okay. Candy, you said that you're going to I don't know which direction you're going, but uh, if you're coming towards California area, I would be very interested to talk with you about your experiment with the cash uh, machine, uh, cash device. Uh, I know you're working on that, you're learning, and um, are you going towards California anywhere? Is this Beverly? No, no. <laughs> Um, Who is this? Miss California. Oh, Miss California. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm not going to California in July, but I will be going to California this year, Miss Miss California. And and so yes, I will. Uh, uh, when you are, you know, yeah, when you're in this direction, why don't you send me, know. me an email at key to truth at yahoo dot com and and let's coordinate that because I will be yeah. going to California. That would be good. Sometimes it's, it's okay. Teach teach truth dot com. Key, key to, to key. truth. K-E-Y. Key to truth. Oh, key to truth. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Come on in, Cynthia and Mayor Marianne. Hi, Mayor. Hi, Marianne. Hello. Hi. I guess what we'll do tonight Hi. is... Just... Hi. Mayor. Hi, Mayor. How are you? Good. Great. I was thinking we will just start off with tonight's astrology um, leading into this thing happening on Saturday with the full moon. Um, the, it's so interesting to me in studying this astrology to correlate it to things like Benjamin Fulford and what I'm getting from these different, um, you know, intel messages. And it's amazing how they correlate. Um Pluto right now, and has been, and will be for a while, at the place of crystals and stones. And the, and gnomes have been playing a part in the charts very strongly, um, you know, for a long time. And there's a lot of messing around with the plates, all this fracking and underground explosions. The CERN thing is affecting the plates It's affecting the sun. Um, It just seems like there's this warfare um, to destroy the earth or to to greatly change it. And so with Pluto at the place of crystals and stones, um, and Pluto is the great revealer. Pluto will force people into seeing not only their greatest darkness but also their greatest light. In other words, anything hidden is revealed. And for it to be right there smack dab on crystals and stones right now while there's geoengineering is going on, I find it highly, um, you know, synchronicity. And then there's the three outer planets. Pluto um, represents divine love. Neptune represents divine wisdom, Uranus represents the divine will. I find um, Uranus at the place of Akasha. Now the Akasha, Uranus gives us sudden upgrades. Uh, Uranus is divine will. In other words, things will be going along 
And divine will come in and say, okay, we have to do these changes, and there will be these sudden unexpected changes. If you go with them, they're uh, really nice, but if you fight them, they'll end up being nice, but you'll kind of be forced into the niceness. It won't seem nice at first. And it's at the place of Akasha. And, you know, when I say that to people, it's like they go, what? What is Akasha? What Akasha is, it is a, it's a state of consciousness where you can actually feel your oneness with everything. A lot of people who love animals um, or plants are very powerful in the Akasha in that they are so in touch with that part of their being that is one with everything that they can't just see plants and animals or other people as objects in a neutral way. They can actually feel their oneness with these people, with these animals, with these plants. They actually feel uh, how their consciousness is both in their body and in the body of that animal or that plant or their person. And that's the Akash. That's the Akasha. Now, it not only applies uh, to feeling our oneness with the earth, feeling our oneness with the plants, feeling our oneness with the animals, feeling our oneness with each other, but it's also feeling our oneness with the divine consciousness itself, feeling our oneness with Archangel Michael, feeling our oneness with everything. And Uranus is at that place right now, and Uranus is is the one that makes sudden, unexpected changes for the better. I'm thinking we probably ought to read 23 Aries tonight. Now, the other major one is Neptune. Those are what these three planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are, are, are. There was a book written about them, like I think in the 50s, by June Wakefield, and she described these as secondary suns. They're that powerful. They they affect the mass consciousness. So, looking at Neptune, let's see where did I put Neptune up here? Um, let's see Neptune. Where, oh, there it is. It's um, at 12 Pisces, which is other worlds. So here you have Pluto at crystals and stones, and the Earth herself is under attack. Here you have Uranus at the place of emphasizing to one and all that we're all connected. What happens to one affects everyone. We, It's like in the Bible where God says, where Jesus says, what you do unto the least of these, you do it unto me. You know, phrases like, step on a blade of grass and the universe trembles. That God is aware of the least sparrow. That oneness is where Uranus is. But Neptune is at the place of other worlds. And there's all this stuff about galactivizing, about beings from other realms, these huge spaceships that get photographed around the sun and then NASA takes those images down, but other people have captured them and they come up and there's all these YouTubes, all this stuff about Roswell and all these people coming out, Linda Moulton Ho and Laura Eisenhower, all these people, <laughs> they're saying, look, there are beings here from other worlds. So here you have these three major players. I'm about to sneeze here just a second. Ooh. Oh, I might be sneezing here. Achoo! Excuse me, that was a wonderful sneeze. Anyway, um, so you have other worlds, you have Akasha, and you have crystals and stones. Earth are under attack. Uranus is saying, listen, we're all one. You can't hurt the Earth. You can't have a war. It's hurting everybody. It's hurting yourself. And here's Neptune bringing in help from other worlds. So maybe um, it would be helpful in light of the fact that the part of fortune in tonight's chart is miracles of other spheres, miracles coming in from other planets. So, Marianne and Mir, I don't think we can read all of these. Um, can I have a vote? Uh, would one of you read one and one the other, um, with the choice being miracles of the spheres, which will be 27 Cancer, that's the part of fortune. 
Uh, Uranus at 23, Aries, which is Akasha. Neptune at the place of 12 Pisces, which is other worlds. And Pluto at 18 degrees Capricorn at crystals and stones. So if you could just, each one of you, pick one of those according to inner guidance. And let's let's just focus on that, whichever one you feel, because they're all big players right now. Um, the one that really speaks to me right now is yeah. the um, miracles from the other worlds. What was that? That in would be 27 Cancer. Hey, Mayor, that was uh-huh. mine, too. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you want to read it? Do you want to read it? Yeah. Do okay, 27 Cancer. Oh, my gosh. I love it. From Austin to Atlanta, we are <laughs> And every place else. Love it. Uh, Go ahead, Mary. You want me to read it? Okay. Sure. I don't mind reading it. Okay. This is Zagol, the angels of the miracles of the spheres. And we ask Zagol to please be with everyone in our earth now. And as you help us, we ask that all other planetary systems be helped also. Beloved, we teach of making miracles with input from other planetary spheres. We instruct a child of God on the powers of cosmic worlds. If a child of God in their mental body places self in any sphere within the in- with the intention of perfecting their spiritual path, he or she can invoke beings of that sphere concordant with the law of one. Our influence is felt in contemplation of the essences of planetary spheres when there is desire for help from them. We teach how to obtain wisdom and healing from other spheres through meditation and evocation. This is similar to obtaining aid from essences of plants or from beautiful oceans or from great teachers. In each case, there is a specific group of heavenly hosts who can help with transference of consciousness, information, and assistance. When help is desired from other planetary spheres and from the hosts and angels that circle these worlds, we facilitate seekers to use the cosmic language just as they do with the heavenly hosts and angels of the zone around earth just as different people have different gifts of the spirit so do planets vary in spiritual qualities and gifts as humanity has pondered the planets over millennia we have inspired thoughts concerning different planets and their divine attributes mythologies religions and philosophies are full of teachings concerning identities of planets and the powers and qualities they possess. It is our joy to list a few of these in the planets most closely related to Earth. Mercury inspires receptivity of wisdom. Jupiter inspires creative wisdom. Venus inspires receptivity of divine love. Mars inspires creative divine love. Earth inspires creative divine will. Saturn inspires receptivity of divine will. Uranus inspires overall totality of omnipotent will of God experienced in the delta level. Neptune inspires the overall totality of omniscient wisdom of God in the Delta state. Pluto inspires the overall totality of the love of God in Delta. Sun inspires creative electrical male aspect of divine self. Moon inspires flowing emotional magnetic female aspect of divine self. Call on us to understand the meaning of the celestial lights 
And when you desire their help, to know the love, wisdom, and will of perfection. We are the angels of sphere miracles. Call on us. Zagol. Thank you, Mayor. That was Did you beautiful. hear that, Cynthia? Yeah, that, that was beautiful. Um, Marianne, which one are you going to choose now? Uh, let's see. Um, the penetrating, what was that? Uh, the Akash. What, Akash. Where is that? That's 23 Aries. 23 Aries. That was my second choice. And this, by the way, y'all, this one that she's reading now is how divine uh, providence is is changing things. In other words, there is definite divine action coming from universal consciousness, and it's coming this way. Okay. Wow. Okay. 23 degrees Aries. Belliferus, the angels of Akasha, of consciousness penetrating all. Beloved, we help people access the powers of the heavenly hosts of the earth sphere for the purpose of victorious love. The angels of Hahadu, 20 degrees Aries, specializes in miracles of water, of magnetic flowing emotions, and working with the beings of waters, the undines. The angels of Oromonas, 21 degrees Aries, specializes in power, powers of thought and beings of the air element, the sylphs. The angels of the Korra, 22 degrees Aries, specialize in miracles of will, electric divine willpower, and beings of the fire element, the salamanders. Now it is time to specialize in miracles of the Akasha, of consciousness penetrating all, the indwelling spirit of divine being in all that is created. Each person is part of the, and by moving into this awareness, miracles are possible. We inspire recognition that each divine virtue exists everywhere, is omnipotent, omnipresent, to the extent that a virtue is experienced as everywhere present, it is called into action. Think of a program on a computer. Until a program is activated, it exists as potential. Just so, as a person becomes aware of the divine quality existing everywhere, he or she can then activate this quality through will and inner guidance so that a new reality comes into being. This is our area of expertise. And this is what we teach and inspire you to do whenever you call upon us. We are quick to reply. The heavenly hosts of Belliferus remove any sense of difficulty with the Akashic principle, the principle of unity, and of any virtue permeating all and being everywhere present. Once a seeker realizes the power of this awareness and how it then naturally works through the different levels to change the physical manifestation on earth, there is no holding back the victory of divine love. Here is a suggestion for testing this principle. When you are in a situation, any situation, in which your level of awareness is higher than those around you, it is a good time to try this test. Ask for inner guidance. Call to awareness a divine virtue you would like to share among the people around you. Let us suppose you receive inner guidance to activate the virtue of wisdom and enlightenment represented by the letter A in the ancient cosmic language. Call upon us, the angels of Belliferus, and ask for our help 
in becoming internally aware of the state of pure being and unity. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then focus on wisdom, the original purity of all ideas, penetrating all creation and present in the people around you. See what happens. Comprehending the cosmic language and producing miracles can become supremely simple. It comes about naturally when the four brain lays states of pure being and will, deep inward thought, flowing feelings and logic, memory and the five senses are all absorbed and tracking on a single or multiple virtues. The Akashic level is that of pure being. Whenever you call on us, we instantly help awaken within you the awareness of the state in the omnipresent, omnipotent, pure being of any divine virtue. We help you experience unity with the quality and feel it existing everywhere in everything. As you do this, your state of being, your will and deep inward thought, your feelings and your logical mind comes into alignment. Over time, by practicing this state of being evokes enough strength of will, purity of thought, emotional clarity and clear sensations to produce powerful vibratory shockwaves. This multidimensional wave aligns with divine consciousness already present everywhere. It can awaken the divinity existing within everyone and everything around you. This assignment may need repeating over and over to convince the analytical doubting critic self, the rational beta state of mind dominant in many people. There can be enough memories of logical results to interfere through the intellect. So your five senses may need to see over and over the changes in behaviors of people and things around you in order to believe. The more deeply a person focuses and concentrates on a divine virtue, in this example, the wisdom of the virtue of wisdom already existing in and penetrating every person and thing around, the more definitive are the results. This is especially true if you ask us to assist you in magnifying the effect. The more a person wills a virtue to manifest, the more that feelings of its presence flow. The more that it is sensed, its element of ease, warmth, coolness, and weight, the more astounding can be the results. While in this state of consciousness, every breath increases the ripple effect, then requesting the beings of the element to join and add their powers of penetration, will, thought, feelings and sensations of a virtue or virtues, the effects can be even more remarkable beyond description. Experiment. Relax into the glory of unity with divine being. It becomes obvious why and how the children of light are given dominion over all that is created. Belisarius, the angels of Akasha, of consciousness penetrating all. And back to you. Yeah, the, uh, let's look at that on a practical level. Um, just, you know, what does that mean in every day? What are we going to do with it now, kind of speak? It means that in meditation, like those of you who are fasting want to meditate, if that would be a good thing to meditate on, you meditate on being one with all the people on the planet, all of them, every last one of them. You know, the political leaders, the good guys, the bad guys, the everyday people, the animals. <laughs> you feel your oneness with everything, not only on the earth but around the earth. In other words, the Akashic Consciousness is when your identity shifts to being one with everything. Now, if you can pull that one off, even a little bit, 
it opens up your superconscious mind and your subconscious mind, which processes 400 billion bits of information a second, to a direct connection with everything. All of a sudden, it's, it's a difference between talking to someone on the phone one-on-one and having a loudspeaker that fills the whole building and you're talking to everybody at one time. When you go into a Akashic consciousness, you're talking to everybody. You're actually uh, directly connected to their superconscious and subconscious minds. And you have tremendous power. And if we can shift from, shift from wishing and hoping to actually taking command. We're going to see tremendous changes. And that's what I just heard, you know, being read, that if we just try these things out. Now, you can experience, uh, you know, little bits and pieces of this so you can make sure that it works. For example, um, if you're living with three or four people and you know them pretty well, you kind of got them pegged, they kind of you know, are predictable. And you think, well, I'm going to um, experiment with this Akashic consciousness. I am going to meditate that I am literally one with these three or four people, that I'm one with them, we're, we're, that I am literally one with them. I'm in my body and I'm in their body and I'm one with them. And then you can choose some uh, blessing, you know, remember karma, cause and effect. You reap what you sow, so you don't want to misuse this ability. But uh, just choose something wonderful that you know you don't mind reaping later. For example, um, you could choose emotions of love and safety. You could focus on love and safety, emotions of love and safety. You could remember times in your life when you felt loved and you felt safe or you felt loving and you felt safe. Or if you can't remember any time like that, you could imagine what it would have been like had you have felt that. And then you can silently, without saying a word to anybody, from the viewpoint of being one with these three or four people, project that into their energy field, that emotion of feeling loved and safe or loving and safe. And just sit back and watch. Just notice. You know, do you notice any changes? You know, are there things going on with these three or four people that uh, are upticks in consciousness and in vibe and in frequency? And then, of course, the ego, you know, the the, the rational mind will come back and say, oh, well, it's just a coincidence. You know, you did this meditation and you saw these things and you're just putting these things together, but it's just coincidence. And so the answer to that is simply do a number of these experiments and just be honest about it. Do you notice any difference? Do you not? You know, what kind of difference did you notice? And just be honest about the whole thing. And after a while, you'll have enough personal experience to say, well, hmm, Actually, um, I am noticing these changes, and yeah, I think there's something to this. And then at that point, you can it, you can uh, extrapolate it out to actually changing the whole world. You can actually change the whole universe that way. And each and every one of us can do it. It's just like we say we all have computers. We could all access a certain website. Whether we do or not is the question. But whether we can or not is not the question. If you have a computer and the website, you can access it. And any of us can do these miracles. Christ said, all that I do, ye shall do and more. And the Buddha said, I'm nothing special. Anyone can go into Buddha consciousness. All the great teachers say that. And they're not lying. And this is one of the techniques that they used. And you think, well, how could it possibly work? That's just so simple to sit down and imagine that you're one with everything, and then that's supposed to magically connect you up to everything, and then you send some kind of a blessing out, yeah, right, in your dreams, but try it before you scratch it off. 
try it before you poo-poo it. You know, 200 years ago, if somebody had described the Internet and telephones, those people would have been called crazy, but here we are. We've got Internet and telephones. Well, this technology that we're reading out of this book is ancient. It's been around for a very long time. And before anybody poo-poos anything, I would suggest giving it the old college try. You know, take it for a spin around the block. You know, give it half a chance and see if it doesn't work. For example, say you have a family member and you've given up ever trying to reach this person. You know, just been there, done that, no way, you know, just give up. You could go into a Kashi consciousness where you feel one with that person. You feel one with them through all lifetimes, through all incarnations. Past, present, future, you just feel the oneness. Akasha is oneness. You feel one with their divine immortal selves. You feel one with all the archangels. You feel one with God. You feel one with everything, and you're focusing on that person. And so then you imagine them. The way the quantum field works is through visual images and emotion. So come up with a visual image of that person radiant, happy, enlightened, whatever you want to come up with, just remember cause and effect. You're going to reap what you sow, so reap something you want to sow, you know, sow something you want to reap, excuse me. And then have the emotion of it happening, not in the future, but now. Just actually feel that that person is just, uh, say you get the visual image of beautiful light coming down from their divine immortal selves and filling them with enlightenment and love and healing and bliss and so forth and so on. And then you're meditating and you're feeling your oneness with them. You've got the visual image and you feel the emotions of that wonderful sense of relief. You feel it as they are feeling it because remember you're one with them. And you feel them going, oh, my God, finally I can relax. Oh, my God, finally I I understand why mother and daddy were the way they were and my sisters and brothers, and I really feel close to God, and now I can make sense of it. And, oh, my goodness, finally I can just lay my burdens down and just enjoy my day-to-day existence. In other words, you're, you've gotten one with them. You've visualized this light coming in and enlightening them. And now you're going through these emotions of relief and relaxation and peace and beauty and confidence and clarity and understanding. And just stay in that emotion, in that that meditation for a little while. And then when you're done, you're done. And just, you know, let it be. Go about your life. But then wait and see what happens to that family member. Just keep your ears open. Keep your eyes open. You know, it'll come through one way or the other. You'll hear about it. And, you know, there will be some major change in that person. And you'll think, well, could it be? Could it have been my meditation? Well, maybe it was. It's worth giving it the benefit of the doubt and do enough of these things to where you can make a a logical you know, common sense assessment. Does this work or not? Say it's a neighbor across the street. I had this experience the other day. Uh, There's somebody in my neighborhood who, um, you know, was playing very loud music, very loud music. And I was supposed to be on the conference call. And it it uh, it was a problem. I mean, it was presenting a problem to me. And I went into Akashic Consciousness. I felt myself one with them. And I said, I love you so much. I am so glad you're my neighbors. I can see your beautiful, divine, immortal selves. And I really need it to be quiet for my conference call. Will you turn off the music? And they did. And what really surprised me was I felt this huge love coming back from them. And it was all done telepathically. It was all done telepathically. And when you get enough stuff like that under your belt, you begin to believe. If you can just do it enough time. So I strongly recommend that. Now, you can do it with one person. You can do it with family members. 
You can do it with people in your neighborhood, but you can do it with the whole planet. And there's no order of difficulty. Like those of you who have studied The Course in Miracles, that's one of the things you learn. And there's no order of difficulty in miracles. In other words, it's just as easy to do the guy down the street as it is to do the whole world. It's basically the same meditation. It's just like it's just as easy to speak to a room full of people on a, a public uh, PA system, you know, as it is to speak to one person. It's the same number of words. It's pretty much the same energy. One, two, three, or a whole room full, or beyond the radio and broadcast of thousands. It's pretty much the same energy. What determines where it goes is your visualization and your emotions. And this actually is quantum physics. All this ancient stuff that we're reading in these books is merely quantum physics. Um, It's just that with quantum physics, you're explaining it scientifically, and here you're explaining it in other words. But I wanted to read Crystals and Stones, at least a little bit of it, because we're reading the three outer planets, Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune. And you're hearing about um, miracles from other worlds. Now, that's another thing to do with Akashic awareness. Feel your oneness with these other worlds. Don't just sit here and think, well, here I am in this physical body that's so many years old and it's in this state, on this street, in this situation, and I'm trying to reach these beings and other planets. I mean, you can do that. There's a place for it. There's nothing wrong with it. But don't limit yourself to it. Sit down in meditation. Feel your oneness with these beings from other realms. And then from the oneness within them, visualize a desired outcome as if it's happening now with the attendant emotions. And that's how you do miracles. And by the way, guys, that's quantum physics. Read the Divine Matrix by Greg Braden. Study this stuff by Bruce Lipton. Rupert Sheldrake, it's been out for decades. You do a visual image and you combine it with emotions. And I'm just telling you, if you do it in the future, if you see it happening in the future, it will always be in the future. The quantum field takes things literally. If you want a change happening now, you visualize it happening now. And you have the emotions of it happening now. It's just a skill. It's like learning how to play tennis or sewing on the sewing machine or baking a cake. It's a skill. There's a way to do it. So here's crystals and stones. These are the uh, heavenly host of AMIA, A-M-I-A. Beloved, we are entrusted by divine providence to supervise all crystallizations on and on and under the surface of earth. All gnome monarchs and their subordinates are ruled by us. Now, the gnomes are the heavenly host that govern um, earth. We allow those who are mature to penetrate further into the facts and effects of crystallization. We show those who should know where crystals, rock crystals, various salts, and precious and semi-precious stones are to be found. To those who are mature enough to work miracles with such stones, we teach how to alchemically turn crystalline compounds into precious and semi-precious stones. Plants are givers of energy and minerals are holders of energy. Minerals can function as libraries and storehouses of information and power. Each mineral retains its unique treasury of information and power. Specific minerals correspond to the five planes of energy, the akashic, the will, the mind, the emotions, and the physical. Akashic minerals are the ores. Copper, lead, silver, gold, brass, and the like function as holders of catalytic and transformational energy. They are the blood of earth. Holders of spiritual or will energy are quartz crystals. They amplify and store intentions and willpower. They are the brain of planet Earth. The holders of wisdom or mind energy are semi-precious and precious gemstones. They store information. They are the internal organs of Earth. 
turn the page here. The holders of emotional energy are sands. They store power to heal the emotions. They are the skin of earth. Holders of physical energy are rocks and stones. They store all the energies of a place. They are the muscles and bones of earth. Go within to the receptive silence and ask to access the energy stored in minerals. This way, immense amounts of startling and precise information and power are available to you in your mind's eye. In any place, pick up a stone and through meditation, access energetic information going back through the ages concerning everything that has happened in that place. This storehouse is so vast. We recommend making specific, specific limited requests as you would do in any library. And then it goes on. But I wanted to say the earth is being tortured by this fracking and underground explosions. Um, it's being tortured uh, by drilling and things we don't even understand, probably tes- Tesla technology. It's being tortured just like a a person on a rack in a torture chamber. And these crystals and stones are calling out for those of us who are humans to use our powers as sons and daughters of God. And right now with this Akashic consciousness and with calling in miracles of other spheres to stop the torture to stop the torture of the earth. And so I would like to do a meditation right now if it's okay with everybody, a group meditation, where we call. I'm going to call in our galactic brothers and sisters to be here with us now who are here to help us. And I'm calling in any that are, um, are trying to hurt us too because uh, you also are one with us, and we need to speak with you as well. And I'm calling in our galactic brothers and sisters. I'm calling in beings from higher dimensions. I'm calling in the gnomes of the earth. I'm calling in our own divine, immortal Christ itself. I'm calling in everything that is influenced in the earth, all corporations, all people that work for the corporations, all occult groups, both negative and positive, everything having to do with the earth I'm calling in right now, all those who live in or on the earth, all those who are connected to the earth in any way, but specifically the stones and the crystals of the earth and the gnomes who work with the earth to come and be with us now. And I am asking for divine miracles of love. One way or the other, I am calling in beings with enough enlightenment, enough power, enough wisdom, enough omnipresence, Akashic awareness, to identify with all these beings that are here now, to feel your oneness with all these beings that are here now. I'm asking that our own divine immortal selves do that now. I'm asking for everybody to go into Akashic consciousness, even the gnomes, and feel our oneness with each other. And I am giving so much thanks that we're doing this right now. And call in any others that you wish to call in from any time or dimension, all ancestors, all lifetimes, all beings, known or unknown to me. If you know about it or sense their presence, you can call them in now. And I am asking that all of us go into Akashic awareness and feel our oneness with each other and with all that is. And from this place of oneness, let us all ask for the highest good to happen for all of us. Because we are all one. We literally are. And when one is harmed, we all are affected by it. And when one is helped, we all are affected by that. Therefore, in the name of who we all are, 
And we all are one with all there is. Let us join together now, feel our oneness with everything, and will and visualize and feel the beautiful emotions of only the highest good of all happening. And we give thanks that this is done. So be it and so it is. Thank you, folks. That was big. And just to finish up uh, on the um, tonight's uh, planets, Jupiter is still at the place of medicine and healing. And it is close to the north node of fragrance and aromatherapy. So I I really honestly believe with this I with all the stuff that's going on that we're hearing about all the occult groups doing you know meditations like we just did all the people praying the animals are praying the earth is praying the galactics are praying everybody's praying there's so much at stake right now with Jupiter at the place of medicine and healing and the north node at the place of fragrance and aromatherapy, it sure looks like to me like we are going to go into miraculous rescue, um, you know, immediate protection, and hopefully enlightenment. And I honestly believe that as our chakras spin in the proper directions of enlightened sons and daughters of God, that there will be such beautiful fragrances, uh, just supernatural fragrances. You know, when you have clear audience, you hear psychically. When you have clairvoyance, you're seeing psychically. When you have clear you have clear audience and clear sentience. I don't know what you I guess clear smelling psychic smells would be clear sentience, a type of clear sentience. But I honestly believe we're gonna smell beautiful smells as these changes occur. Marianne, I just have a feeling you have either more to pray or a comment. I hope I'm right, but I'm just feeling to ask you. Uh, what's going on with you right now in response um, to this? I, I just looked up uh, psychic smell. Okay. And it's uh, clarifaction. Oh. C-L-A-I-R-O-F-A-C-T-I-O-N. Um, clarifaction. So. Um, Clarifaction? Clair- clarifaction. Clarifaction, yes. Clarifaction. Um, Cynthia. Yeah. Clarisentience is clear knowing, and that's from your crown chakra. Okay. Audience is from your thymus, and that's psychic hearing. Okay. Gotcha? Gotcha. Um, it, it, it says clarifaction is a form of extrasensory perception that enables the gifted person to receive psychic or paranoial information by means of psychic smelling. It is, however, important to note that a person with this ability does not smell any real odors or fragrances, but it, it's on a higher level. Uh, psychics with this extraordinary, extrasensory gift are able to smell beyond the normal range of the smelling sense. There is no physical source for such a smell. And other people in the room would usually not smell anything unless you are gifted. Uh, wow. So, yeah. Um, I I do have a comment. Um, yeah. I I love I love the meditation. Boy, that was just that was just right on and and very 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 powerful. And um, I am I am. Before this call, I'm I'm listening to Matt Kahn's uh, Angel Academy, and he talked about this, 
and basically of of we are you know many of us are having uh, having situations our own situations but also as being very sensitive to the world around us we're feeling the um the pain in the world and he also said you know for us to move through our own situation whatever it is be it abundance be it pain be it uh whatever um and also work with the world it is bless he he's suggesting to bless uh not as as a deep a meditation as you did but because we're all one um of blessing everyone we meet um of of whatever our situation is to start there or to start in in the world um of of whatever we think the world needs or and or be it our in our own world whatever we need and and it comes back and uh not just to get it but to be the incredible people or beings that we are to change the energy of of this planet and not to sit on our stuff. Yes, it's it may sometimes be hard, but to use that as a as a um our own situation or the world situation as a I think he called it uh well uh, stepping into our our hero and uh and being who we are and and changing the energy around us and our own lives so that falls in line boy that's with, right in line definitely with what you said so thank you yeah. so much yeah and this ego talk that we were doing earlier is so right in line too because um hold on just a second with my dog there's some dogs out there barking, and my dogs are holding it pretty good. But anyway, um, any limitation that we place on ourselves, um, any self-identity, any limited self-identity that we place on ourselves, in a sense could be called our ego. And there, the ego is very important because by taking on these attitudes and these self-identities, we fit in. We fit in with our peers, our society, um, and that's important. That has a place. But when you're in a situation like we're in right now where our whole planet is at stake, where uh, like 25,000 people were killed for their body parts in the Ukraine or something like that. I don't know if that's the exact thing, but there's this huge thing of of children and people being harvested for their organs. And you've got these huge fires up in Alberta. You've got all this fracking going on. You've got all this fighting going on. Um, The ego, which is a wonderful thing, and it has its place, needs to go sit in the corner. And we need to don our divine costume, our self-identity as sons and daughters of God, which means going beyond who we were taught that we were. And getting into this sex talk tonight, if you, there were certain things that had to be done by the dark agenda to try to take control, and a biggie was, besides controlling the money supply, besides controlling the educational systems, besides infiltrating all the political systems and religious systems and science... And the music music what? system. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the entertainment industry. All of these areas, a big, 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 big one was to confuse people sexually, confuse them. Because the way we're set up as sons and daughters of God, the sexual energy can produce such ecstatic states of of consciousness that it can actually, according to the ancient scriptures, lead to immortality and youth. Um, 
if if you go back to what we were saying earlier about how emotions uh, activate the quantum field, so you you will create a visual image, and there will be corresponding emotions to it, and that's how you do magic. That's how you activate the quantum field. Okay, well, think of the emotions that occur between an enlightened woman and an enlightened man who are truly in love and know what they're doing with their seven chakras. The glandular secretions are just off the charts of just um, beautiful emotions that correspond to amazing chemical changes in the human body. Uh, If you read the works by Dr. Joe Dispenza, Within one minute of having a thought with a corresponding emotion, there are over 100,000 chemical reactions in the human body. 100,000 chemical reactions. And that's where all this stuff about psychosomatic healing, uh, Carolyn Miss, uh, the, these guys that cure themselves of cancer um, and write these books about it, they change their thoughts, they change their emotions, they can't change their chemistry. And seemingly miraculous things happening. Now, er- earlier, and where we're talking about the Akasha, when you go in a meditation, or if I go in a meditation and I feel my oneness with everybody, and I create visual images and emotions concerning my oneness with whatever I'm feeling oneness with, and they're beautiful emotions and beautiful visualizations, it definitely affects my body chemistry in a big way, but it also affects those beings that I am connected with. And this has been proven. This was proven decades ago. That's what a morphogenetic field is. That's what Rupert Sheldrake came. Rupert Sheldrake was a a scientist in Silicon Valley decades ago. And they grow, back then, they grew these uh, special crystals for computer chips. They grew them in these hermetically sealed vats. And these crystals had to be like super pure. I mean, these vats were really protected. And suddenly, these crystals in one of the vats started mutating. Where there were other companies in Silicon Valley growing their own crystals for their own computer chips and their own vats. And there was no way there could have been any contamination. None. And yet, their crystals started mutating too. And so Rupert Sheldrake, this scientist, studied it and and he figured it out. And he coined the term morphogenetic field. And it's the exact same phenomena that we saw with the hundredth monkey thing, where this anthropologist went to an island and studied these monkeys on this island that were separated from anybody else by 50 miles. And this one monkey accidentally, while she was there, dropped this fruit into the creek, and it got all the sand off of it. And so instead of eating the root with all the sand on it, like all the other monkeys, she ate it without the sand, and she started doing it. She learned to do it. So suddenly all the other monkeys on the island started doing it. But what was so amazing is there were other anthropologists on other islands 50, 100, 200 miles away. And suddenly those monkeys started doing it too, just like those uh, crystals in the vats in Silicon Valley. It's called the hundredth monkey effect. And the Bible talks about it. It says one good man can save the city of 10,000 and 10 can save the world. So you don't have to run for president and you don't have to be the head of a big corporation. Every one of us on this call is so immensely powerful if we can just saturate our minds and our emotions with the right thoughts and feelings. 
And that's what this war of Armageddon has been over, is over our minds and our emotions. If they can limit what we think and control our emotions, then they can control the quantum field. So we have to rest back our own thinking. We have to rest back our own emotions. Well, we're affected by everything that goes on around us, so what do we do? Well, let's go into a Akashic consciousness. Let's feel our oneness with everything and change it from the inside. And then you think, well, who am I to do that? That's mind control. You know, wow, that's taking on a lot of karma. But I ask you this question. How dare you not do it? How dare you not do it? With all the suffering going on, how dare you not do it? Christ did it. He took on the whole sins of the world. Paid the price. And he said, all that I do, you shall do and more. So why don't we all just do that? Let's just, every one of us go into, you know, while we're fasting, whatever, go into meditation, feel our oneness with everything, the galactics, the world, everything, all the corporations, all of it, all the occult stuff going on, all the gnomes and the undines and the salamanders and this, all of it. Everybody through all lifetimes, all ancestors, you feel our oneness with it. With all the angels and the archangels and all the great masters, feel our oneness with it. All the demons, all the bad guys, feel our oneness with it. And then as one with it, visualize supreme happiness and the highest good of all concern. Feel the emotions of it and say, this is it. I take full responsibility for it. As one with all this, I'm doing it right now. And see what happens. see what happens so anyway back to the sex situation we've all been taught totally wrong we've been taught totally wrong in the cartoons we've been taught totally wrong by seeing what our parents did or did not do and their parents before them and their parents before them these negative entities on this planet have kept us at war for generations, as long as they can divide and conquer, they're happy. Well, I don't think they're happy, but they feel like they're doing what they've been programmed to do. And it, I've been seeing some very good signs. In Like I'm 67 years old, I've been seeing some very good signs in the 40-year-old group especially from Europe. Um, The men seem to understand that women are different than men and that if you're going to have sex with a woman, you need to learn how to bring her pleasure and then take pride in your skill with this. Um, In my generation, the men had no clue that there were any difference between men and women as far as sexual passion goes. And now these younger people are being brainwashed with uh, gender confusion. Like Obama just recently made an executive order that in all schools everywhere that girls can go into the boys' restrooms and showers and boys can go into the girls, you know, pushing that um, agenda of confusion. Because if, if they can get us all revved up sexually through explicit advertising, oh, buy this car, or, you know, wear this perfume, or, you know, blah, 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 and you'll be sexy. But keep us confused about how to create bliss and divine consciousness with it. Then they can create chaos with the sexual energy, which is what they're trying to do. This whole Babylonian thing is is about chaos. So we as elders, like most of us on this call, or would be considered elders right now in our age group. We've got to, you know, unprogram ourselves. We've got to learn what works and what doesn't. And there's plenty of good books out there, by the way, both ancient and modern, about that. And then as elders, we have to teach the younger people because they have been really confused. 
And all this stuff is going to end because of the Akashic consciousness, because of the miracles, because of miracles from other spheres. We're going to go into this beautiful age. But they're going to look up to us, the elders, for instruction. So just very briefly, if you are God manifesting as a woman, your role is magnetic. You attract. And if you're God manifesting as a male, your role is electric. You send out. You create. And for the sexual energy to be kept alive between a man and a woman, those polarities have got to be understood and followed. If you're in a relationship with a brother or a friend and you don't need the sexual energy there, then it doesn't really matter that much. But if you're in a sexual relationship and you want to produce those emotions which activate the glands to fill both your bodies, with youth and immortality and with ecstatic states of spiritual awareness, then the polarity has to be kept in touch. And what that means is that the male provides for the female and the female receives it. And we've been taught the exact opposite. We've been taught that the woman nurtures, she provides, and the male either likes it or doesn't like it. He receives it. And that right there is a huge turnoff. It breaks the polarity. But in an ideal world where we're not under financial slavery and all this stuff, but where men are enlightened and women are enlightened, the man with the testosterone is very strong. He's got that testosterone, that go go get it done, go get her done energy. He uh, can provide on the physical level. He provides on the emotional level. He provides on the creative level. And he provides on the spiritual level. Those are his four chakras of the seven that are electric. And those four chakras in a woman are magnetic she receives this big, strong man who builds the house, who puts up the fences, who tames the horses, who plows the field. He does all these wonderful things. She receives those. Emotionally, this is a wonderful man who's one with God. He's done his vision quest. He's at peace with himself, and he helps her with her emotions just like he helps her with the physical. She receives that. On a creative level, the throat level, the thymus, the the thyroid, all that level, all that testosterone in him, he's creating all the time. Hey, girlfriend, I've discovered a better way to put the bridge over the creek. Hey, girlfriend, I've discovered this beautiful idea. We can invite all our neighbors. We can have a drumming circle. We can have beautiful music. Create, 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 create. And then on the spiritual level, which is the crown chakra, he has this fiery will, this uh, faith that can move mountains. And he says, oh, we can do it, we can do it. And she receives all that. However, there are seven chakras. We have only covered the four of them. In the second and fourth and sixth chakra, the woman is electric. That's her inner masculine. It's the uh, how we are androgynous, and it has to do with the sacred marriage that we were talking about the last few times. And what it means is this. She will create a relationship with that man. That's her second chakra, and he will receive it if they're compatible. She will love that man. That fourth chakra is electric, and he will receive her love. And she will know that man. With her third eye, she will know that man is God. And he will receive that recognition that he is a son of God and he is beautiful from her. And with that dynamic of the seven chakras, they go into bliss and they stay in bliss. And what, now I studied with uh, Kujina Maychek, who was the grandson of, of one of the three leading gypsies 
in Romania and Czechoslovakia. His uh, grandmother was 120 years old and had just married her 32nd husband, who was 32. But she was young. They are very occult, and they have very definite sexual teachings. And then I studied with Harley Swift dear Wet Reagan, who is the first cousin of Carlos Castaneda, who wrote those books. And then there was another one. I have a little bit of knowledge, just smatterings, but at least it's enough. Plus, I've studied some more with the Franz Bard material and a few other things and, and studied some books. So I have a little bit of uh, a smattering of knowledge. I have enough knowledge to know that the workshops and the books are out there. Some are good, some are not so good, some are mediocre, but they're out there. And and people can find them and they can learn this stuff. But basically speaking, my general impression is this. When you meet somebody, you're looking for a mate, you're wanting a sexual relationship, the very first place you start off with is the crown chakra, the the top of the head, which is purple. That color is purple. And you find out if this prospective mate has the same uh, reality about God that you do. You know, there's got to be compatibility in that crown chakra issues. And the crown chakra issues are our oneness with God. In other words, uh, someone who has a very deep connection with God, say in a Catholic religion, uh, trying to date an atheist are trying to date someone who hates the Catholic religion but is really into some other religion, say Druids, um, this would cause a problem with the sexual energy because the sexual energy goes up and down the spine and is related to the seven chakras. And every chakra has a bunch of glands around it that produce, uh, excuse the beeping, I don't know how to turn off, my call forwarding, I, I've tried to do that, and I was told how to do it, and I tried to do it tonight, and it didn't work, so I'm going to have to go back to him. But anyway, um, I'll try not to lose my focus here. So the very first place you start off with when you're courting is if you see someone who might be a prospective partner, is you come to an agreement at least somewhere about God, whatever God is to you. Like two atheists could make it together. But you you need to find compatibility in the seventh chakra, which is one's relationship to God. And if the guy or the lady can pass that test, hold on just a second. Okay. Um, where there is compatibility on a spiritual level, then you come down to the sixth chakra. The sixth chakra is wisdom. It's knowledge. Now, those of us on this call, we're into the angel messages. We're listening to Ben Fulford. We're studying quantum physics. We're studying diet, mysticism, and all kinds of stuff, we are compatible in that way. We all understand that kind of talk. We talk about galactivizing. We're talking about music. We're talking about these things. We can all relate on that level. And so with a prospective partner, you need to be able to relate on the level of the sixth chakra. If you pass that test, then you come down to the throat chakra. This is the creative chakra. And there's got to be some common ground or agreement, if y'all are compatible, about what you want to create with your life. For example, some lady that really wants to go live on a farm, she really wants to get out in nature, she's not into the city thing. Not only does she want to be out in nature, but she's read the Anastasia book, she wants to do that. She wants to create that world, that community, that reality. If she's with a guy who is definitely not into that, no, 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 he wants to get on a boat, he wants to sail the oceans, or he wants to live in a penthouse in a city, or he wants to go to other worlds, it ain't going to work. 
But if they both agree that they want to create something that's compatible with both of them, you've passed that level. Then you get down to the heart. And there's got to be compatibility about love. What is love? People have very different ideas about love. There are some people who are very private, who uh, they want a partner, but they want kind of like a trail mate, someone who can kind of travel with them, but who can give them lots of freedom. And, you know, they can love someone like that, but they love the trail more. So they need a they need a companion who also loves the trail more, and they can love each other that way. They could make it. But if you get someone who um, really wants to be devoted, who really wants to make this sexual thing a real focus on a spiritual path, then they need to find a mate who also feels that way about love. And if you pass that level of compatibility, you come down to the third chakra, which is emotional. Now, in my case, I've been studying emotional therapy for decades. In my case, I've gone to workshops. You know, I I was married to this guy for 25 years who worked with emotions. So I've got a lot of skills. So for me, I would need a mate who also can understand emotions and work with them in a similar way that I do. I've gone back to my birth. I've gone back to my uh, conception. I've gone, and, you know, I had a lot of trauma. I've had to clear a lot of stuff. But I would like to have a mate who's done similar work. So he's, you know, if you don't do this early work, if you don't clear these early traumas, there is a tendency um, to keep recreating the early traumas with any significant relationship. And if you've cleared them, then to the extent that you've cleared them, you don't have to keep playing those, you know, mommy-daddy tapes over again. So someone who's done a lot of emotional clearing and work with someone who, oh, what's uh, conception trauma? Oh, I don't even remember my childhood. Oh, yeah, I kind of remember when I was three years old, you know, when my dog died, I was really upset. And they had no clue about the traumas in their subconscious. There would not be compatibility. And Is then you could, yeah. Oh, I wanted to add something. Uh, yes, you're... And let me propose that as Cynthia's talking, there's not no one out there for you. Well, let me propose there is because when we broke, just think of a bubble. When we broke off of a big bubble of God and we are God, we were a bubble and that bubble broke in half and it continued to break, break, break into other little bubbles. Well, that one bubble that broke in half, that's called twin flame. So that is the other part of you. And as we go through this, and Franco's talked, we'll run into our twin flame. But what Cynthia's talking is the very important thing is to healing that, those traumas in you, loving yourself. So then when the time is ripe, then if you're a woman, you magnetize that mate. And if you're a man, you somehow get, I don't know about man right now, you get electrified to your mate. <laughs> so I want to encourage yeah. everybody. And see, back to what we were saying earlier on the call, this is a matter of life and death for the whole planet. Because when one is harmed, all are harmed. When one is helped, all are helped. If we can go, if we can be in happy relationships, fulfilled, I mean happy, not just getting by, not just polite, but I mean ecstatic, beautiful relationships that just get more and more beautiful. It it blesses the whole quantum field. It blesses everything. It blesses the animals. It blesses the forest and the fields and the plants. It blesses the children. It blesses everybody. It's really important. It blesses our bodies. We stay healthy. We don't get cancer. It blesses our emotions. We don't get depressed and suicidal. It blesses our mind. We we live in a high inspired, um, uplifting uh, mental state hopeful and positive it inspires our yeah oh and were you finished with the chakras because then after when you're finished oh i still have the first chakra you want to do the what yeah the second 
Well, after you finish the chakras, then I want to bring in the music part. Yeah. Okay, good. I think you're at the, uh, the chakra of emotion. I'm, I'm at the third chakra, so let me do the second and first one real quick. The, <clears throat> the second chakra is a place of relationship. When a woman has found common ground with a man on those other levels, she is able to be in a relationship with that man. She, she's clicking on the spiritual level. She's clicking on the mental level. She's clicking on the creative level. She's clicking on the heart level. She's clicking on the emotional level. So she's willing to relate to that man. And if they are compatible on those other levels, the man hopefully is saying, yeah, baby, I'm ready to commit. Now, the physical level. Um, they have to be compati- <coughs> compatible on the physical level. In other words... If you got, you know, they have to uh, relate in a compatible way what kind of house they want to live in. Uh, Do they want to wake up at the break of dawn and do meditations or do they want to sleep till 2 and stay up all night? They have to figure out a physical lifestyle that they are compatible in. Plus, they have to have physical education if the children were brought up in enlightened homes they would just learn it from their mother and father but on a physical level what allows a woman to feel sexual passion is exactly opposite from what turns a man on in other words with a woman if you read the books and there are plenty of books A woman, you would start with her toes or her fingertips or the tip of her nose or her head. You just lightly touch her extremities. And when that feels good, she can relax. It feels wonderful. You might move up her foot a little bit or up her hand a little bit. You take your time. And when she pulls back, you find what emotional block there is. You work through the emotional block. It takes a lot of work for a man to seduce a woman. But it's worth it because if he really loves her and he's been educated as to how a woman's passion works, he will have the skills to do what it takes to get her really hot where she will have orgasms, she will go into ecstasy. And when a woman is truly hot and having an orgasm and having ecstasy, it fulfills a man sexually. Then when he experiences his sexuality, he feels fulfilled because he has fulfilled her. And that's the way it works. A man is completely different. A man, his sexual organ is what gets turned on, and then after his orgasm, then the extremities, the other ones are more turned on. They're exactly opposite. But on the physical level, the man gives to the woman. The woman receives. So theoretically, a, a young boy would experience his father satisfying his mother sexually. He would just get it growing up. He would know what to do. He would take pride in his masculinity. He would be proud of the fact that he could pleasure a woman. And it requires um, him getting his satisfaction only when she has hers. In fact, I spoke to a, a man in his 40s, in the elite um, social caste of Europe. And he says in his group, you know, the people he hangs out with, you know, in the fancy clubs, no man will have an orgasm until the woman does. He waits till the woman has an orgasm before he has his, because they understand this. They understand that it's, it's the man's love for the woman to help her have an orgasm. And um, it's a skill. It's a skill. And there are a lot of good books on it. There are a lot of good workshops on it. Some books are better than other books. Some workshops are better than others. It's like any other area. You just have to find the ones that are really good. But that's well, the way what it hap- works. What happens when, ha- when, the, when the orgasm goes on? Okay, here's the deal. When they're both orgasms. I'm just going to make this quick so we can get on to you, but here's the deal. The ejaculatory fluid of a man, from what I've been taught, and the different areas all agree, you know, the ancient writings, the different shaman, the different ones, the ejaculatory fluid of a man contains the most precious, vital essences of his body. 
It contains the most powerful uh, substances in his body. And unless a child is being conceived, men are taught to have an orgasm without ejaculation. And the way you do that is when, when you're making love. When the man is just about ready to ejaculate, he lets the partner know and they cool off for a minute. He'll pull out, they'll just stop all activity and let the energy subside. And then they'll go back to it again, and then when it reaches almost the point of no return, you back off again. Now, this does two things. Eventually, the man will have an orgasm without ejaculation, which means that the ejaculatory fluid, which has already been produced, is reabsorbed into the body as a type of cerebral spinal fluid, which leads to immortality, according to the ancient scriptures. Um, But another thing that happens is every time the man and the woman come close to orgasm and they don't do it, they back off, and they wait till the energy subsides a little bit, and then they go back at it again, they bring it right back up to almost to the point of no return, but no, they signal each other, nope, got to stop. They back off and let it subside. Then they do it again. Every time you do that, the when you do have an orgasm, it will jump up a chakra. In other words, if you come close to orgasm, but you back off, um, and then you start again, if you have an orgasm, it'll be at the second chakra. If you do it again, it'll be at the third. If you do it again, fourth. And what the shaman and what the teachers of the ancient stuff say to do is get it at least to the heart chakra because every time you come close to orgasm and you you quit and you back off and then you start again, it pushes the sexual energy up one level. Now catch this, folks. When you push it up a level, what are you doing? You are activating those glands at that level. Well, what does that mean? It's a bunch of fancy words. No, it isn't. It means that those glands are activated and dumping into your bloodstream to both partners very powerful psychoactive chemicals that lead to altered states of consciousness. So in this kind of lovemaking, you go into realms undreamed of. I mean, you go into journeys, uh, sexual journeys that correspond to each of the chakras. So in a nutshell, that's the sexual talk in a nutshell. Now, I strongly recommend that you follow up on this. Uh, John Gray has some good stuff. Raphael Kushner. No, John Gray has good stuff. Let's see, a guy named David Dieta. I think it's D-E-I-D-A, has excellent stuff. There's really good authors out there who are just putting it out there. There, There's male authors that say it to the guys, and there's female authors that say it to the women. They're saying this is how it works, this is how it doesn't work, this is, you know, how you do it, this is how you don't do it. And, of course, like anything else, you have to separate the wheat from the chaff. You just have to take it all with a grain of salt. But your inner voice will say, no, this is right or that is right. I can take this part from this author, this one. And we can put it together as elders to teach the younger ones. Back over to you, um, Liz. (laughs) That was great. Well, yeah. The way Elizabeth Diamond would do this, these talks we've been having for the last two or three times with sex, love, and music, I'd do it the wrapped in supreme happiness with maximum efficiency, minimum effort. I wouldn't go read books anymore. I'd take all this information, sitting back listening to <laughs> all this beautiful information, and I I'd go it. ask all my galactic friends and my ancestors, and I'd say, okay, where am I at this? I would love to be at the end of, you know, the sacred marriage and that where works. am I at and help me heal and how do I heal, what cycles yeah. am I at and ask the angels and go on that journey because that's where we're at. And, you and, can ask for true divine Abishika. You can ask for the heavenly host of sacred sexuality, you know, the tantrikas of of the different religions 
there is beings of sacred sexuality in the Hindu religions, in the uh, Tibetan religions, you know, just all different cultures throughout the world. You can ask the enlightened beings of sacred sexuality to come and give you true divine initiation and uh, to come into your consciousness and let you just understand it. And they can do that, absolutely. Because at the beginning, well, it's it's not really the beginning, but just for measure, the beginning of the journey is it's like, well, you know, when you hear this, you're fascinated and your mouth is opened. It did when I first heard it. So, you know, it, it'll help you go through loving yourself and, and going beyond that, which Cynthia just beautifully described tonight, that journey. That's great. And, okay, so... You know, this journey I'm on with the the music, musicology, the study of music, the gift of God. And, um, you know, and I see things prophetically, signs and wonders. It makes you wonder through my journeys of of like that, Cynthia. So, um, so through my study of a person, Prince, I've been watching all these interviews. And, at, you know, I'm studying the person. He's like a role model to me because of some things I've heard, you know. And you, and you, when you hear it from a variety of people, even him himself, and from a variety of people that have been in his life of variety measures, uh, this man was a beautiful man. He cared cared about his music. Yes, he worked, 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 and made everybody else around him work. But he cared about the music, and he anyway. The signs and wonders out of many things I've been getting is has to do with sacred union and sacred marriage a lot of his songs were about that especially at the beginning and still are um but he he said one time i don't can't say verbatim but look at the sky it's blue 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 and red make purple purple rain and i was thinking on that and i said what me prince Elizabeth, you're breaking up. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're good. Thank you. Did you were you able to hear what I said or no. Not not a couple last sentences. Okay, so uh anyway, so purple rain so he said blue and red make purple. Uh, something like that, and so purple rain, right, and the sacred marriage and all that. So I was thinking then, Cynthia, I just went off on this thought and meditation. Okay, I mean, red and blue make purple. Red and, is it blue, red and blue? Yeah, red and blue make purple. Okay, if you don't know, our blood is red in our veins, but when it hits the air, the outside, it turns, well, wait a minute, it's the opposite. Our blood is blue in our veins. When it hits the air, if we get a cut, it's turn it's red. So I was, oh my God, that's like a sign and a wonder for sacred marriage because the blue inside of our blood, and then it comes outside red. Energies interweaving, sacred union. And uh, is it not a crazy thought, Cynthia? And also, you I've know, thought uh, about it before. It is amazing. And also red and blue are is is a sign of and putting it red and blue together makes purple is a sign of like different blood you know black and white coming together unifying sacred union, yeah, so hey Elizabeth and then yes, did you know that Prince wrote the song that Sinead O'Connor made famous? Nothing compares to you, yes, do you remember that song? Yeah. To me, that's a song about sacred union. Absolutely. And they played that song all around the world at uh, a certain time a couple of weeks ago, all the radio stations all around the world. There's a, there's a sign and wonder. What I'm saying, too, okay, regarding music, you guys, have you ever entered or went to a wedding and the music, it was a live band, live band, and the music just enters your soul. Have you ever entered, went to a live music, and the music just enters your soul? One time I remember when I first 
went to, started going to a Christian church that had a live worship band and everybody danced. I entered a building for the first time and that worship music hit me. It's like, oh my God, I'm ready to party. I just could not stop moving my body. And have you ever hooked up with music and put you in a trance and you just feel happy? I mean, you're just soaking it in. My thing for um, healing is connect with, lay down, connect with collective consciousness and don't think, just drink. Imagine yourself as a sponge. But music is going to be wonderful. I, uh, so many things, thoughts with the study of musicology, which Prince gave me this gift. And um, it's just it, it's just going to be wonderful, Cynthia, with the music and the sacred union and marriage. These, these talks aren't for nothing. They're they're building on something. And Prince and his music and others. The music is coming, you guys. The music is coming. I can't wait. I can't wait. And along with music is dancing. And when you can dance and not be afraid and say hell with everybody, I don't care what anybody thinks, and you just go for it and you get into it and you lose that ego and that pride that we've been programmed in, oh, my God, it's so wonderful. It is so wonderful. You're like in another realm here on earth. Believe me, I've done that many times. And then, and, and, or laying on the ground in the depth of a deep mystic music. Even if there's no words, a keyboard. Oh, my God. Comments on that. And we'll take questions and comments regarding all of the subject we've been talking about. You guys, come on in. Com- you want to comment on that, Cynthia? With more music? Anything else I'm with you, you 100%. Music, um, I... One of my great teachers is Hazrat Anat Khan, who is the head of the Sufi Order of the West, and he was a big guy on saying that the most, the greatest power for change is music, and we saw that with the Beatles. We saw it throughout history. Where, uh, I mean, Elvis Presley changed everything. I mean, you can go back there. Just certain people who did things that nobody else did, and it changed the consciousness everywhere. And I'm with you, girl. Music is where it's at. Let's go for it. Can I add a comment here? It's yes. not just like it's not like you just listen to it. It's like we're going to well, it's it's gonna be an experience that's been here, but it's gonna be upticked. I mean you walk into a place that's music, you you just melt. I mean, it's hard to explain. And you get healed and it's just it's just wonderful. And, oh, yes. here's another comment. All, all these singers, okay, you ever wondered why, okay, I'm using Prince because I'm studying Prince. Uh, you ever wondered why he looks so young, 50, what, seven years old? I, get, I came to a conclusion, Cynthia, and this has happened to me in a worship with a live band. He played every instrument. He played the guitar. When you sing and you play an instrument, music, look at what the music did to him. Yeah, it does it to your glands. I mean, that's what we're talking about. Within one minute of having a thought with emotion, 100,000 chemical reactions. Can you imagine the chemical reactions in your body from the emotions and changes that you go through with uplifting music? Whoa. I'd like to say, I, I two weeks ago, or I think a week Speak ago. Speak up a little bit, Marianne. Yeah, a week ago. Uh, I saw Paul Simon of Simon Garfunkel, and he played 22 songs. He's 74 years old, and he was right there. He played the old stuff. He played the good new stuff that he had. I mentioned Thursday on our call that he went to uh, someplace in Af- uh, South America and studied with uh, the shamans there and did initiation and it changed his music. He's doing tribal stuff. He's doing some incredible stuff. And it it brought so, the, the old stuff and the new stuff brought so many people uh, together uh, at the Bass Concert Hall here in Austin. It, we were on our feet. We were just I mean, it was it was amazing, and then you felt like you were you you were one, right? Yeah, the whole and we were the we were in awe, we were mesmerized, and then there was a part that was eerie. I mean, you could feel 
the same emotion throughout that whole building. It was it was incredible. So and it and it does something to your body. I'll use an example of the happy song, right? By whatever's name, happy and clap and the happy song. You guys listen to it. Don't you feel something in your body? It's like you can feel that emotion. Happy and you get happy and you want to dance. And dancing does something to you too. What does it do to you, Cynthia? The dancing, the moving with the music added. Ecstatic dance is one of the uh, heads of the zone uh, of the moon. There are 28 uh, heads of the zone of the moon for the 28 stations. And ecstatic dance is one of them. Ecstatic dance um, is absolute magic. Uh, it's, It's magic for the body. It's magic for the emotions. It's magic for the mind. It's magic for the spirit. I, I mean... It's huge. It and feels like you're having sex when you're in that mode. Yeah, I mean, you're actually you experience. are having sex with with life. Yeah, but it takes it takes a lot of gut to push that ego away and just do it. I did it in the Christian realm. I I just said, okay, I'm just going to do it. Nobody else is doing it. But I will. What they're preaching, I'm going to do what they're preaching. I'm going to make action what they're preaching. And I did it. And then after a while, when you break through that, you take that leap, it it hurts just a little bit. (laughs) But then it becomes natural to you, and you don't give a crap. You're not even thinking of that anymore. You just, like, get into the music and you get into the worship. You know, I was worshiping God, which was, I was worshiping all of us. And it's just incredible. Yeah. And another thing I want to make a point in, and why I'm studying this musicology, music, every, whichever how it's going to be from everybody, people unknown, just stuck in it. It's music that's coming purely from your heart, and you've pushed your ego down. You know, you just listen to your heart and you bring it out. It's not commercialized. You won't let it get commercialized. Somehow, some way, there's going to be thousands of people with music just come out of them. And they're just going to let it flow. They're not going to care. And and they'll come through all avenues, you know, not even through Warner Brothers or anything. That So many avenues, so many avenues that nobody's going to be able to stop it. And it's going to be awesome for all of us. Awesome. And Hallelujah. What, uh, <laughs> what Boris said the other day on Candy's show, pipe this music through your home. I, You know, I'm an architect mode. I want to do everything. Oh, architect, let's design houses that are compatible for this golden age and pipe that music home. And wow. <laughs> right? So, wow. Okay, let's take questions, comments. Come on, you guys. Let's have a little bit more conversation on there. I know there's some more to come out on this. Can I add a couple of little things? Yes, come on. Well, um, when Cynthia, when you were talking about the chakras and when you um, pause and, uh, you know, reabsorb the energy and then start up again, you go to the next higher uh, chakra uh, and, and like that. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh, uh, when you get to your crown chakra... And and as you go up, what your what to my understanding and to way it it was for me, is is your awareness, your consciousness, awakens to each of those higher dimensions. So your um, um, orgasm yeah uh, becomes whole body as you go. Oh, up. absolutely yes. It's a it's a path of uh, enlightenment. Okay now. Now this, I mean, I wouldn't have even, I didn't even understand this until after it happened. Mm -hmm. But when you keep going, and I mean, we're talking like eight to ten hours, (laughs) uh, when you get past the crown chakra, uh, when you get up into the uh, eighth, ninth, tenth um, uh, uh, dimensions and chakras, with your awareness. Now this is bizarre, but this this really is what happened for me is you end up 
and now this is going to sound silly to say it, but I don't know any other way to say it. You end up in a three-way with source. Yeah, and, that's right. And all along, every time it's like, hello, can this get any more extreme? <laughs> you know, <every> <laughs> That's the triangle, the triangle, the three. It's yeah. not a, not exactly a triangle. It's like um, it is like being one with source, and, yes. and 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 in between, you know, when your vehicle is that right-handed tantric path, uh, uh, it, you know, it's like the the um, you know, first it's a singularity, and then it's a creation. So you're, it's like literally um, having a uh, not just a whole body orgasm, but a whole um, creation orgasm. Exactly. And think what that does to the quantum field for the planet. If even just a few couples could have super sacred sex, it could change everything for everybody. Yeah, and, you know, I had to learn the hard way that that's probably the reason why you know, the dark side will basically do anything to prevent those relationships. Absolutely. From Darn and, right. And, uh, you know, there doesn't have to be any other reason. You know, there's not, it doesn't yep. have to be a special being or a special person. They just don't. I mean, yep. you know, it's like that's so way beyond their comprehension and it freaks them out so bad. They'll just do anything to stop that. They'll pull out all their uh, stuff. Bingo, Pat, and that's one of the reasons why I keep talking about Prince and music and the musicology thing. I believe the Prince is, well, for me, because it highlighted for me his death and then me studying him, just for me, the fractal, it's a a trigger in the uptick uptick of our enlightenment and, and they they can't come they can't come there anymore. There was a couple of other things too, like when you were talking about the chakras, I I remembered an experience that I had that the people at the Berkeley Psychic Institute explained to me in relation to the person that I was in relationship with at the time. Uh, I believe they said it was the seventh uh, dimension. Uh, there's a place, Elizabeth, listen up. There's a place called the Music of the Spheres. Yeah. And the way they explained it to me is, um, is that that is the dimension is that the whales and the dolphins, the crustaceans, come from. And they told me that that what I and my guy, uh, you know, in the wholeness of our being, he, they they said that we like to hang out in the music of the spheres, and that we would sing to each other like, you know, whales sing to each other. And I can tell you any time, uh, even now, any time I hear a whale song, I it just it's just like every cell in my body explodes. Wow. Cuz it it's like it's just it's just a tender I can I can't even there's not even words to describe it. Um I happen to uh uh get emailed a, a blue whale song last night and I just I was blah, 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 all night long <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I, and the last thing I was going to also share when you were talking about like if you kind of like as a mental thing you want to go out and find a guy kind of thing and compatibility and stuff well one of the things that I've l- I learned about twin flames is it, 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 in the context of like one becoming two becoming one uh the what I found out with my guy was that in the ways that we were alike, we were exactly alike, and in the you know in terms of how we thought, how we felt, how we looked every no matter what topic we either were spot on, could read each other's minds, blah 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 blah, exactly alike or we were exactly opposite. Wow. And the challenge for us, uh, and, it, and certainly it was true when I was told this, was that there's a huge tendency when you when there's so much where you're exactly alike that uh, 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 you, there, it requires uh, a willingness 
to uh, communicate on all the levels uh, and not make assumptions. Yeah. Because then it, it, it's very traumatizing if you assume you know how the other person, say, is thinking about a particular something to the point where you don't feel like you even need to talk about it or clarify or, you know, anything like that. Then what have you got? you got a war going on. Yeah. So, so that was, and that's like the big, big, big challenge is uh, was uh, to uh, to recognize that that's just how it is, you know, and that and that if if something blows up and we realize, uh oh, this, you know, bookends again, you know, we're facing in opposite directions on this deal. There, there has to be. You don't really have to have the same be the same in every way. You just got to be aware that um, uh, uh, on anything that the, that the other one is the opposite, you know, their point of view or their feeling or their whatever is the opposite, that that doesn't make either one of you wrong, and it doesn't mean that uh, you have to kind of like battle it out. Uh, it just means that you have to decide either to negotiate, you know, to the best yeah. you can, uh, like, like anybody would, would like two sides in a war would negotiate a peace treaty, <laughs> and that means you either take turns having your way or your turn, or you, you know, each uh, settle for half or, or, you know, those kind of things. So it doesn't mean that everything, because, I mean, honestly, uh, especially with my guy, it was like, it, things got so things got jazzed up faster when we had disagreements than when we didn't. <laughs> wow, you know, it because the energy just becomes more more explosive and intense, yeah. and you know, and we could be like in the middle of the fight, and then all of a sudden bust out laughing. That's beautiful. But, <laughs> but as long as the you know, as long as you, but you have to have the one agreement you have to have with yourself and the other is to is to. Um, uh, uh, to not judge, right? Just just observe and and work with it. Mm-hmm. And and the way I love the 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 dolphin and the whales thing because it it had gotten me, uh, you know, to uh, watch and listen to the whales and how they relate. And you know, as even as physical beings, they have much much huger brains than we do. They have much higher functioning brains than we do. They have much higher electrical and magnetic function. They are they are so superior to humans. It's it's just beyond the beyond, and uh, and their whole function on the planet is is beyond the beyond. So so this is not you know this is a this is in a way it's like this is a way, a com- conversation about our part in creation. And yeah. It's, just about us that that all of creation these concepts um, um uh, are part of thank you that's beautiful i really appreciate your sharing that that was thank you Pat. beautiful yes and while we're waiting for somebody else to come in we talk about love music love and i mean uh sex love and <laughs> music love well, just practice love and everything you do and everything you think. Practice love unconditional. Love unconditional. That's just loving somebody for who they are, every part of them. Negative, if we see it negative, positive, or in between. Love unconditional. It's no judgment and practice. It takes practice to make perfect. Who else wants to come in? Yes, hi, this is Sunny, and this is such hi. an awesome show. This, I, my thoughts and feelings throughout throughout the whole presentation that Cynthia made. Just this is such an important teaching that people really need to, even just part of it, the most basic part of it, just to get this right is just so important. And I would really like to hear a lot of people to be able to hear tonight's show and what was shared about sexuality, sacred sexuality, a system. And then even about the uh, the polarities, because we're all, a lot of people are confused about, you know, about homosexuality and all of that. And, and I 
certainly don't agree with abuse for anybody or, you know, or, you know, people are gay and being bashed and things like that. I don't agree with any of that, but it really makes total sense what you were explaining about the polarity. And, and then I want to go on to the music thing, of course. That's just very, very powerful for me. And uh, I wanted to say that I saw um, a film the other night, uh, a DVD, and it's called Alive Inside, and it was about how people, elderly people had Alzheimer's. This man went into the nursing homes, and he brought headphones and iPods, and he put them on the Alzheimer's patients and played music for them that meant something to them in their earlier life, something that was really special for them. And they actually, they they just brightened right up. They got their memory. A lot of their memories came back. They started talking about these past memories, and some of them would clap their hands, just get up and dance even. And this is just, I, I was just blown away by this. I thought this is this is just such a demonstration of how powerful music is, and apparently he has spread this uh, throughout. You know, many many nursing homes now do this, although it was going against their paradigm of drugs and everything else they were doing. Was the drugs were actually dumbing these people down rather than waking them up, and they were, you know, just kind of hanging there with their heads down, and and then. Uh, this guy came along with the headphones and put them on. You could just see their eyes light up, and you know this just so this this film is called Alive Inside, and there's a website Alive is Alive Inside dot something. I can't remember what it was. Maybe U.S. something something other than com and org. And so I wanted to share that. That's something I want to share tomorrow on the show as well. My show because that is very inspiring to me, and it's a real demonstration of how powerful music is. So anyway, I've, you know, I've believed and known this for a long time. Music has been very powerful in my life, continues to be. So I'm, I'm very happy that it's being shared on these shows, and, and, and along with the sexuality teachings, it's very important teachings. And they kind of go hand in hand in a lot of ways, too. You know, the two music can stir up such ecstasy, and it can also stir up sexual energy and bringing it yeah. to a higher level. Yeah. So You yeah. just said it, Sonny, exactly my point with the mm-hmm. Prince being the sign of the times and his music. Because Prince was in touch with his feminine side and his male side. And, you know, and he tried to show it the way he dressed sometimes. And, yeah, some of it was for show, for the music, the stage. But he was truly in touch with the feminine side and his masculine energies. And he was a sign of the times of that sacred union. And then his music talked about it a lot. If you go back and listen to the words and others' words that come from pure music, they it's just plain poetry the music is yeah yeah it is. alive so, inside i love that title alive inside yeah. i watched a little bit of that sunny and even the ones i've worked in nursing homes there's ones in sitting in their wheelchairs and don't talk and never talk and never engage in anything and they just sit there and they put these uh, music on these people and they light it up didn't they sat up in their chair and oh go, ah! yeah even if they didn't talk they go ah it's beautiful that <laughs> Music is our natural state. Singing is our natural state. Humming, not talking. But anyway, that's another call, isn't it, Cynthia? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sonny, were you finished, on? I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, well, pretty much. But, you know, there's always, I mean, my enthusiasm was really bubbling up through this whole call. And and then after I saw that film, I went, oh, my God, oh, what? You know, this is something that really needs to be shared. I mean, people, uh, I know it's been spread around. A lot of people have seen it. But, gosh, I, I hadn't seen that film before. And as much as I believed in the power of music, I hadn't seen that demonstration of it. So so that was just really well, awesome. Well, see how you're creating, Sonny? You came to the Diamond Shows and listened to the sacred sex and the music thing, and you were thinking about it, wondering about it, and your desires and oh. your imaginations, your thoughts. That 
DVD didn't gravitate into your life by accident. You created that. You right. wanted to learn more and and be and you've come to the understanding and knowledge of it to put it into action into your own life. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that awesome? It really is. I didn't even know much about it when I got it. I just liked the title. I said, "Ooh, this sounds great! Alive inside." So, you know, I, I go to the library and I see these titles. I, oh, that looks like something I'd like. So I I grabbed it and. Yes. <laughs> yes, it was really, really something. I mean, you know. we're going to be seeing more and more that I've been at worship, live worship conferences in the Christian realm, and I think they'll be a part of this because that, anyway, a sect of it that I know, mystic mysticism, a live worship band, and the guy came down and played his electric guitar sitting by a person that had this ailment, and she was healed. I mean, just listen to mm-hmm. music. Hmm. Well, it just wakes us up in so many ways. It wakes, seems, wakes up our, our cells and so many, so much more on different levels. So I, that's how I feel anyway. So I like, yeah, I like to be able to bring in more music on my show, and that's difficult to do when sometimes over cell phones. But nevertheless, you know, it's a theme I'd like to follow up on, and I'd like to get oh. Merle on again. But you know, he's been very busy. But I'd like to get him back on again, too, because, yeah, he was um, one of the people that caused me to become even more aware of the power of music. So, it's a great show tonight. Thank you, Sunny. Is there anybody else, too? Thank you, dear. Well, stay tuned for Voices from the Alternative World tomorrow, Tuesday night, 730, with Sunny and Dale. Any other questions, comments? Come on, guys. Cynthia, Marianne, Mayor, anybody? Candy? Well, we got lots to think about and wonder. Makes you wonder. Sign and wonder. All righty, then. Thank you, Cynthia and everybody. Marianne, Mayor, and Kat, and everybody share and everybody listens. I love you all, and keep shining your diamonds. We've got lots of awesome things to look forward to. Good night, not everybody. I love you guys. Yeah, not in the future, not in the past, but in the now, right, Cynthia? <laughs> right now. Too. Right now. Right now. Keep shining. You shine, Diamond, right now. Love you. Good night, everybody. for healing or a change in your life to help you enjoy it more fully you might benefit from a galactic energy reading and clearing from chris jacobs chris will work with you on a soul level to clear unseen negative influences implants programs contracts and energetic blocks chris jacobs is a gifted energy healer contact him today at christopher stephen jacobs at gmail.com